Well, I want to welcome you to a very special edition of the Power to Change today. And I want to share with you the six most powerful words that have revolutionized my life. They're about to do the same for you as well. They're simply this. I have a covenant with God. Those six words brought me out of the darkest moments of my life. Those six words enabled me to overcome every trial I've ever faced. Those six words have caused me to tap into God's blessing like I've never experienced before. And they're going to do the same for you as well. In today's program, we're going to look at how God's power is released in our lives, how we tap into or how we plug in to God's power to release His blessing, His favor, His, His health, His healing, His anointing in our lives, in our families, and in our circumstances. How does it happen? Through the covenant that God made with us through the blood of Jesus. The covenant that God made with us, the, the most powerful contract, the most powerful agreement that God could ever make or commitment that God could ever make is sealed forever in His blood. When you understand that, your, your life is never going to be the same again. No matter how difficult your moment is right now, no matter how difficult your life is right now, everything is about to turn around and it's going to happen because you're going to understand how to place a demand on God's covenant. And that's why I've gone back into our most classic series, Placing a Demand on the Covenant. You're so going to enjoy this program. It's going to entertain you. It's going to encourage you. It's going to lift you up. But more importantly, it's going to transform your life forever. It's going to empower you to place a demand, to plug in to God's miraculous power, His favor, His blessing in your life. Check this out. You'll never be the same again. Now we look at a woman with the issue of blood in Mark chapter 5 and it says, in verse 25, a certain woman had an issue of blood 12 years, hemorrhaging for 12 years. And she suffered many things from many physicians and spent all that she had. And she was never better, she rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, though, she came in the press behind and touched the hem of his garment. And she said, if I may but just touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. And immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of her plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned to the press, turned to the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? Imagine Jesus saying that. You're in that crowd. And he said, who touched my clothes? And he looked around and the disciples said in verse 31, Lord, the multitude is thronging you and you're saying, who touched me? And he looked around to see her that had done this thing. And the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Now, Go in peace and be whole from your plague. I like what he says in Matthew chapter 9, verse 20. Let me go through a, a few verses with you to help you understand this. Matthew chapter 9, verse 20. It says in, his, in Matthew's version of this story, Behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. She touched the hem of his garment. Now, why didn't she touch his arm? Why didn't she touch his hair? Why didn't she touch his feet? The hem of his garment was harder to reach than his feet were. She could have just touched his feet. What is the significance of touching the hem of his garment? And what does that have to do with the covenant that God made with us? Well, that's what we've come to find out today. And that's what we're going to understand today. And that's what we're going to experience because this woman got something. Aren't you tired of just about hearing, hearing things? Aren't, don't you want it? Don't you want to get it? Don't you want to experience it? Don't you want the power of God in your life today? I want the power of God in my life. I want the blessing of God in my life. I want the protection of God. I want the inheritance, the will of God in my life today. I need his power. Maybe some of you need healing from some disease. You need his power today. Maybe you need a miracle in your finances. You need his power today. Maybe you need deliverance in your emotions and in your mind today. You need his power for that. Maybe you have a relationship that's broken, a relationship that needs to be restored. You need his power today. His power can heal it. 
His power will deliver you. This woman touched the hem of his garment. She put a demand, folks, on the anointing. She put a demand on his covenant. And I, that's why I'm here to talk to you today about putting a demand on the covenant that we have with God. Putting a demand on the covenant. Folks, everybody understands. A little baby that's hungry, a newborn, a newborn understands there is a supply of milk in the neighborhood. <laughs> he knows God has put a supply there, but he's got to place a demand. If he doesn't place a demand, there's not going to be any supply, right? Folks, God has given us a covenant. God has given us promises, but if we don't place a demand on those promises, we'll never experience and enjoy the benefits of that covenant and the benefits of those promises. So we have to place a demand on that covenant, a demand on those promises. How do we do that? Well, this woman found a way to do it, didn't she? And she understood, if I just touch his garment, the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. She took the initiative. Stop waiting for God to take the initiative, and you have got to place the demand upon God's covenant. You've got to place the demand. Stop waiting for God to say, it's okay for you to be blessed. No, he's already said that. And he said, you've got to place a demand on God's supply. This woman, she touched the hem of his garment. Why? Why the hem of his garment? Why? Because, folks, one important Jewish concept which is often missed in English translations of the Bible concerns this story of the woman with the issue of blood. Because in Matthew chapter 9, having heard about Jesus, the woman said within herself, if I touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. The text indicates that it was specifically the hem of his garment that she touched. An important detail from a Hebrew viewpoint. Why was the hem of the garment so important? Because we're going to answer that question, but this is not going to be just a religious study of historical truth. It's, it's going to mean something to you if you'll just give me a couple more minutes and pay attention to what we're saying here. The English word hem is a translation of a Greek word meaning a tassel of twisted wool. A tassel of twisted wool. Remember the tassels you would have on your graduation hat? You know, the little tassel that came down with the strings? It's like a tassel. And the, that's what the English word for, meant for the Greek word. The English word helm is a translation of the Greek word which means tassel or twisted wool. The woman was in fact reaching for the tassels on Jesus' prayer shawl. In Hebrew, these tassels, which are attached to the corners of the prayer shawl, are called the tzitzit. So if you want to know some Hebrew, it's called tzitzit. If you want to even try to pronounce that, most of us would start speaking in tongues if we said that. Tzitzit. They were and still are worn by Jews in fulfillment of the biblical commandment found in Numbers chapter 15, in intending to remind people of God's commandments. Now, let's go over there for a minute to Numbers chapter 15, and I want you to see this for yourself. In the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, chapter 15. And let's look there in verse 38. And the Lord spoke to Moses and said, Speak to the children of Israel. We're in Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Speak to the children of Israel and bid them that they would make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations, and that they would put upon the fringe of their borders a band of blue. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them, that you would seek not after your own heart or your own eyes. The Amplified says it this way, and it shall be to you a fringe or tassel that you may look upon and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them, that you may not spy out and follow after the desires of your own heart or of your own eyes, after which you, have, after which you used to follow and play the harlot spiritually, if not physically, that you may remember and do all my commandments and be holy to your God. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. Now, folks, 
what does this have to do with us today? What does this mean? Here's what it means. In Numbers 15, verse 38, when he says, tell them to make hems of their gar on their garments and that they should put the fringe of the border, a ribbon of blue, this word is translated in Hebrew as the word wings. So now watch this. For this reason, the corner of the prayer shawl is often called wings. Now, I happen to have a prayer shawl here, which is exactly what Jesus was wearing when he, when he was walking and when this woman touched the hem of his garment. And I want you to see that this is exactly what Jesus wore. And when he wore it, you see the blue ribbon, the blue band, and then on the end of it is this tassel. And I want to show you what this tassel is made of because you might think, gosh, the pastor's, you know, getting a little weird on us. <laughs> Let me explain what this is made of and why this is made in the way that it is made. What this tassel has, and this is what she was touching. She saw that he had this tassel, this hem. This is the hem of his garment. She saw, she saw this. And she understood what it meant because she had been taught the Hebrew tradition. And that is this, folks, that each tassel or wing, this is called the wing, each tassel or wing consists of five double knots. If, you, if, you, if the camera can, sh can look at this, and maybe you guys can see it up close, but there's, there's five knots. One, two, three, four, five. There are five double knots on this tassel, and then there are eight strands which if you count up all these strands, there's eight strands and five tassels, that makes up 13. Now you say, what's the significance of 13? Well, if you understand that this word tzitzit in Hebrew for tassel or for hem, the word for hem is actually, in Hebrew, words had num num numerical value placed upon words. And the numerical value in Hebrew, I'm losing some of you, I know it, but this is going to heal you. Watch this. Because everybody has an issue of blood. Maybe yours is not an issue of blood. Maybe you have an issue of a bad husband. Maybe you have an issue of a, of a, sick, uh, a sick condition in your body. Whatever it is, whatever your issue is, it's going to be healed today. Yeah. By the hem of this garment. Now, what is it? The word for hem in Hebrew, which we just went over, which also means wing, is the number 600. So this this sits it or this hem is numerically in Hebrew represents the number 600. So if you add the number 600, and this is what the Jews did, this is why the Jews made it this way. They added the number 600 to the 5 and the 8, which equals 613. What does that mean? Well, according to the Bible, there are actually exactly 613 Old Testament commandments of the Bible. 613 commandments which are represented in the hem of this garment. Can you hear me still? Can you, you follow what I'm saying? So there's 613 commandments that are identified by this hem and as Jesus wore the hem of his garment, the hem of his garment represented the 613 commandments that he himself had already fulfilled by dying on the cross or going to the cross. He said, I didn't come to destroy the law, I came to fulfill it. Jesus fulfilled every law, he fulfilled every commandment. This woman knew that the only way to be healed is if she fulfilled if, if I fulfill all the commandments, I can be healed. But she realized Jesus had the hem of his garment on him. And if she just touched what Jesus did, if she could just touch the fact that he already fulfilled all the commandments, all of her, all of her disobedience in exchange for all of his obedience, his fulfillment of the 613 laws, he's the fulfillment of the law. He is perfection in the flesh. He is holy. There is no sin in him. There is no spot in him. He obeyed all of the commandments. All 613, he obeyed. He did not break one. This is so important you get this, folks. He did not break one commandment. Therefore, he had the right to be healed himself. And she understood that. 
And so she said, he has the right to be healed because I know he's a holy man and I know he's never broken the commandment and I know he has the right and he's fulfilled all 613 commands. He's never broken any one of them. She said, but if I just touch what he did, if I take his obedience, if I take his fulfillment, if I exchange my sickness for his healing, I can exchange my poverty for his abundance. I can ex exchange my weakness for his strength. Because the only strength that we can have comes from perfection. You got to be perfect and none of us are, but Jesus was and he wore it and he had it and it represented his perfection and it represented his obedience to all the commands. Now, this word for tzitzit is wings. It's wings. Where is it used again in the Bible? Malachi chapter 4. Let's look there quickly. Malachi chapter 4. I want you to see this, folks. Malachi chapter 4. I know I'm teaching you some, some symbolism and some, some things from the Old Testament and the New Testament, but it matters and it, it will it, it puts depth in you puts meat on your bones spiritually and it gives you a reason to know to put you, gives you something to sink your teeth into and to believe Malachi chapter 4 verse 2 last book of the Old Testament Malachi chapter 4 this tassel this hem the hem of his garment is referred to and spoken of again here in Malachi chapter 4 Verse 2, and it says this, For but unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. When she saw this tassel hanging down from Jesus' prayer shawl, she said, Oh my God, Malachi 4 2. <laughs> this is exactly what she said. She said, Wow, that has healing. There's healing in his wings. There's healing in the hem of his garment. There's healing in the covenant. This is a covenant that God made with mankind. And Jesus is carrying that covenant. And Jesus possesses that covenant. And if I just touch the hem of his garment, if I just touch the wings of his garment, I'll be made whole. I'll be made healed. I'll be healed because the Bible says there's healing in his wings. <laughs> Folks, now you got to read the Bible to understand what we're talking about here. Otherwise, I look like a fool. <laughs> but if you look at the scriptures and you put these scriptures together, you realize, wow, that's why she touched the hem of his garment. It wasn't just, oh, I just got to touch him. A lot of people touched him and didn't get healed. The, the disciples said, look, Lord, multitudes have touched you. He said, no, somebody put a demand on my covenant. Somebody put a demand on the hem of my garment. He who knew no sin was made to be sin for us that we would be made the righteousness of God in him. I wish somebody would get a hold of this today. That you are now, because of what Jesus did, he became sin so that we could be made righteous. He became, he took upon himself all the curse so that we could be blessed. He became poor that we would be made rich. He took upon himself our sickness and disease that with his stripes we were healed. It's the hem of his garment, folks. What is the hem of his garment? It's the fact that he fulfilled the law. He obeyed all the commands, and therefore our faith in his obedience brings us into the blessing. In the Old Testament, it was our obedience that brought us into the blessing, but in the New Testament, it's our faith in his obedience. She was putting her faith in the fact that Jesus has fulfilled all the commandments. Jesus is wearing the perfection. Jesus is the perfection of the law. Jesus is the keeping of the law. Jesus is the Sabbath. All the promises that you'll have rest on the Sabbath, that you'll be blessed in the city and blessed in the field, it's all in his perfection. It's all in him being, being the one who carries out all of the law. 
so that now we're no longer in a legal relationship with God by what we do. We're in a friendship with God because of what Jesus did. If we will just touch the hem of his garment. The 613 laws that you can't keep are on Jesus' body. The 613 laws that if you miss one of them, you've missed all of them and you're going to hell, he carries all of them in his body. All of the curses for our disobedience, he carried all those curses in his body. All of our sins for not keeping all 613 commandments, he took all of our sins. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Every commandment, every curse that is the consequence of our disobedience, he took away. Every Every sickness that is the consequence of Adam and Eve's sin, he took away. Every punishment for all the sins that we committed, he carried. And he put them away. Folks, we've got our eyes. We've had our eyes on the wrong thing, and we need to take a lesson from this woman. If I just touch the hem of his garment, his obedience, his fulfillment. He became a curse so that we would be blessed with Abraham. He took the curse so that we could walk with him, so that we could talk with him, so that we could be his friend. If you keep all my commandments, you can be my friend. God, I can't keep all your commandments. Oh, but Jesus did. Let me touch the hem of his garment. If you keep all, all my commandments, you can be healed. Lord, I can't keep all your commandments. Oh, but Jesus did. Let me touch the hem of his garment. If you keep all of my commandments, you can be blessed. Lord, I can't keep all your commandments. Oh, but Jesus did. I just touch the hem of his garment, and I can have his blessing. I can have his healing. I can have his protection. I can have his authority. I can have his anointing. I can have his wisdom. I can have his mercy. I can have his grace. I can have his ability. I can have his power. I can have his knowledge. I can have his understanding. I can have his compassion. I can have his love. I can have everything that he has if I just touch by faith. Don't you see it, folks? It's not about what you do. It's not about what I do. It's about what he did. And we look upon what he did and we touch it by faith. And Jesus said, woman, your faith has made you whole. For the woman with the issue of blood, for the woman who had spent all her money on doctors, for the woman who needed a miracle, for this woman, it was her point of contact, the hem of his garment. She said, wow, that has healing. There's healing in his wings. There's healing in the hem of his garment. There's healing in the covenant. This is a covenant that God made with mankind. And Jesus is carrying that covenant. And Jesus possesses that covenant. And if I just touch the hem of his garment, if I just touch the wings of his garment, I'll be made whole. I'll be made healed. I'll be healed because the Bible says there's healing in his wings. And we look upon what he did and we touch it by faith. And Jesus said, woman, your faith has made you whole. For your gift of $35 to support Gregory Dickow Ministries International Outreach, you'll receive an authentic reproduction of the prayer shawl worn by Jesus. As you pray, the hem of his garment becomes your point of contact. Call now to request your personal prayer shawl as your point of contact. If you call right now, you'll also receive a full-length DVD or CD of today's message on how you can place a demand on your covenant along with Gregory Dickow's inspiring little book, Precious Promises of the Blood of Jesus. Please call the number on your screen right now to request this powerful point of contact or order your prayer shawl online today at gregorydickow.org or mail your request to Gregory Dickow Ministries. Order your prayer shawl today so that when you need a miracle in your life, you can reach out and touch the hem of his garment. 
You know, when I taught this at my church, a lady heard me after the first service. She ran home. She got so excited. She ran home. She came back and she gave me a replica of the prayer shawl, one that was just like the one Jesus wore. It inspired me so much that I actually put it on for the next service and preached with it because I wanted to show to everybody what it literally meant. And I want, I want to show you what must have gone through this woman's mind because it was known at that time that the tassels of this garment right at the end represented all of God's commandments and all of God's promises. And she understood, she believed something that most of us just don't realize. She knew that she couldn't keep all of these commandments, but Jesus was the one. He was the true covenant keeper. He was the one that she was touching. She knew that he could fulfill and had fulfilled all the commandments so that the blessing could now be hers. She knew that he wouldn't deny her if she put her faith in what he had already done. That he kept the commandments. He kept the covenant. And all she was doing was simply believing it. She knew it meant that God had fulfilled his promises and all the commandments of God were complete in Jesus Christ. Beloved, it is still the same today. Jesus is still a faithful covenant keeping God. And so many people have shared with me how this revelation has brought them healing in their bodies, freedom and deliverance from addictions, healing in their marriages, their homes, their finances, so much more. So much so that I wanted to make this available to you today. We've even had people who have taken this to hospitals where their loved ones were uh, sick and they placed it on them just as a point of contact. And I want to put this in your hands as a gift when you get my teaching series. And when you get this DVD, I want to send it to you. I want to send a DVD or a CD series of this special teaching on our covenant with God, touching the hem of his garment, how to place a demand on your covenant that God made with you. If you want to get this, I'll send it to you right away, right away with the promises that God already made. In fact, I want to send you this book as well with it, The Precious Promises of the Blood of Jesus. One promise every day of the month for 30 days, it'll transform your life. Perhaps you don't have an issue of blood like this woman did, but we all have an issue. Maybe you have an issue with your family or an issue in your marriage, or maybe you have an issue with your finances. Touch him with your faith and he'll touch you with his power. Touch the hem of his garment by believing Jesus did it all. And I believe you're going to experience God's power like you never have before. Watch this. Call now to request your personal prayer shawl as your point of contact. If you call right now, you'll also receive a full-length DVD or CD of today's message on how you can place a demand on your covenant along with Gregory Dickow's inspiring little book, Precious Promises of the Blood of Jesus. Please call the number on your screen right now to request this powerful point of contact. Love covers a multitude of sin. When we're walking in love with one another, and there's a unity there that the Bible says, when the world sees the love that you have one for another, that's when it's gonna know you're really my disciple. Love changes everything. Join Gregory Dickow right here on this station for the all-new Changed by Love broadcast. Discover God's love for you and be changed forever.